And this is Dr. Michael. It relates also to the finches of Galapagos Island that Darwin saw and witnessed. It's it's actually something related to this too, right? Exactly. Um, I've got a, a number of examples here. Uh, so let me just ooh, ooh, go down to the finches again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, here's that slide again. <laughs> and one of the uh, one of the um, traits that people always get excited about in the finches is the fact that you can have thick beaks versus uh, thinner beaks like this. And they say, well, isn't it, isn't it amazing that uh, random mutation and selection can do that? Well, only three years ago uh, was the gene that was uh, responsible for these different traits tracked down. And it turns out that the gene which is responsible, the variant of the gene, is one that has been degraded. It has suffered a damaging mutations. And so, again, you know, one of the you know, core examples of evolution, and one of their textbook examples, is actually devolution, not evolution. Okay, so um, the point is, yeah, that uh, pretty much, let me just go back, pretty much everything, all of the mutations uh, that uh, Richard Lenski saw were degradative. Uh, 30 of them, over, over 60,000 generations. And in the book, I also talk about other examples. For example, dogs, the dog breeds that have been produced in the past few hundred years. It turns out scientists have sequenced the DNA of a lot of these and they're mostly degradative uh, changes that make them have short legs or curly hair or, or so on. <laughs> so how does a Darwinist respond to this, Dr. Michael, like when he sees these studies? Do they like uh, deny these studies or fight it back with what mechanism uh, is it? Uh, they do not deny them. So, so far, the only response I've gotten is that they say, well, sure, everybody knows that um, uh, sometimes getting rid of a gene will help a species. Mm -hmm. But there's also lots and lots of constructive changes, which they have yet to point to. Uh, they, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes they will point to instances of what is an apparent duplication of a gene. Mm -hmm. For example, there are proteins involved in vision, uh, color vision, and it looks like the gene for one beginning uh, protein uh, called an opsin was accidentally duplicated. You know, so during the DNA replication product uh, process, this gene was kind of stuttered and it was reproduced twice. <laughs> and then maybe one of the genes got a couple of mutations that gave it slightly different light absorbing properties. <laughs> and that could be the basis for uh, color vision. <laughs> and you could say, well, <laughs> there's a couple of responses one could say. You could say, well, that's, that's not a big deal because you're just getting more of the same and slight variations uh, <laughs> in its properties. And you could also say that, in fact, we don't know that that was occurred by Dar a Darwinian mechanism. <laughs> that is, we just see there's two genes there, <laughs> and the Darwinists are assuming that it occurred by a Darwinian mechanism. So it's sort of like a circular, circular argument. They start with the premise that Darwinism, by like working on mutation, natural selection is the, the true fact, and they prove it by this.